All right, everybody, how's it going? .NET Conf 2019, we got Hamida here to talk, uh, talk to us about microservice, .NET microservices in Docker. Take it away, Hamida. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, uh, my name is Hamida Rebey. I am Microsoft MVP in Developer Technologies. And today I will present uh, a session about architecting my microservices in .NET Core and using Docker ecosystem. So I will share my screen to start. Not showing up yet. Oh, there it is. So uh, during this session, we learn how to work with the microservice architecture pattern and Docker containers using the .NET Core 3 platform to build a distributed system. We will start by talking about the transition from monolithic architecture to an architecture that consists out of small and independent services that you can scale independently on your different uh, software cycle from development test to production environment. And before talking about microservices, we need to understand the difference between traditional application approach and microservices application approach. Any application is built as a collection of services and can be de developed, tested, versioned, deployed, and scaled. For monolithic applications, scale is done by cloning the app on multiple server. Uh, here, we, we say server, we mean uh, VMs, uh, virtual machines. but for microservices, scale is done by deploying each server independently with multiple instances across servers or VM. We will start by presenting monolithic application approach uh, based on a live application. Here we have the presentation live that presents for us uh, UI, user interface. It can be web, mobile, or desktop application. The service layer is responsible for handling HTTP requests and uh, responding with e either HTML or JSON or XML for web APIs, for example. The business logic is here with the treatment, the, we can say the processor of our application. The database access layer is a data access object responsible for access to the database. Despite having a logical modular architecture, the application is pack packaged and deployed as a monolith. Monolithic applications are more of a single complete package having all the related needed components and service encapsulated on one package. But for microservices, the idea, it's really simple. It consists to, sli to split your application into a set of smaller interconnected services instead of building a single monolithic application and each microservice is a small application that has that has its own hexagon architecture consisting of business logic along with various adapters. So microservices can expose or rest for, for example, for the, the, the case of API, RPC or message-based API, and most services consume APIs provided by other services. And uh, microservices are deployed independently with their own database per service, so the underlying. Here, as you can see, we have many technologies and many patterns. But uh, if you want to use microservice, we have uh, more and more uh, patterns like bounded context that we know uh, before that we use it, uh, like domain-driven design, secures, uh, and uh, domain, event, domain events mediator. We have many, many patterns that we still can use it with microservices. And we have many technologies uh, today we will uh, present Docker containers, for example, and we'll talk uh, a little bit about uh, Orchestrator. Developer consider microservice as uh, uh, architecture style that promotes the, the development of complex applications as a suite of small services based on business capability and multiple independent subsystems in the form of anonymous services. And the following picture show the microservices architecture style. Here we can find the various components that we can find in a microservice architecture. 
for example, we start from the clients that uh, communicate with API gateway that is uh, ser that serve as a client endpoints. Well, we'll talk about that after. And we have the identity provider that manages the identity information. So, uh, it's related about uh, authentication uh, within a distributed network. And the API gateway is communicated with our services. Here we have four, for example, services. And we, we find uh, uh, service discovery, management, stat uh, static content. It's uh, like uh, page and CDN. Here we will talk about the importance of API gateway in microservices. It's uh, sit between the client and services. It acts as a reverse proxy, routing the request from the client to the services. It may also perform various cross-cutting tasks, such as authentication. We find SSL offloading, SSL termination, rate limiting, etc. If you don't deploy a gateway, the client must send requests directly to the front-end services. It creates a coupling between the client and the backends, and the client needs to know how the individual services are decomposed. That makes it harder to maintain the client and also harder to refactor the services. Now we need to deploy our services. We consider that we created our, uh, each service. So we build our, our microservice architecture. And to do that, we will use, for example, Docker container. So what's Docker? Docker is technology that allows the creation and use of container. And so it allows for developer and the sysadmin to, to easily deploy their application in sandbox to run on the host operating system. To start our demo, we need uh, to, to have a Windows 10 professional and enterprise because we, we can't install the Docker desktop uh, for Windows in uh, Windows 10 home. Uh, we need Visual Studio 2019, but uh, 2017 uh, it supports uh, uh, Docker and Docker for, uh, desktop for Windows and Docker tools. Now we'll uh, try to start creating uh, ASP.NET Core 3 solution. But before we will try to architecture, I will uh, go now to the demo. Here I have an old uh, solution created from four years ago. Uh, this old solution is based on, uh, on Web API, created by Web API, the old, uh, the old way of Web API. As you can see here, we have the service layer. It includes many controllers. I have many controllers to manage uh, my application here. And we have uh, the business part here. It's, uh, it's divided by application and domain. We have the infrastructure. This is the database. It's a layered application. And uh, I have uh, the web part, it's, uh, it's a web, Angular JS inside MVC4. It's uh, all the application, as I said. And I would like to recap uh, to do a uh, microservice architecture here. And to start here, I created a blank project here. It's a blank project and already created some uh, web API for my APIs, but we will do that uh, again now. So here in Visual Studio 2019, I have a blank solution and uh, I will add a project here. And we will choose ISP.NET Web Application. For example, for me, I choose here, I have configuration service, user accounts. I go back to the old one. I will choose, for example, here, contact API. I would like that this control will be separate services as API. So I would say here, contact, contact service, for example, and click here, create. And here we have ASP.NET Core 3 that uh, already mentioned from two days. We will use this. And here, as you can see, in advanced parts, we, re we are requested to, to say enable Docker support here requires Docker, uh, Docker the desktop. Here I have the application, the Docker application desktop. As you can see here, it's Docker is already running. And here we can choose between Windows and Linux. For me, I will keep Windows because I am in, uh, I'm, 
I am in Windows container here, but if we change here to Linux, we need to switch uh, to Linux container in uh, Docker desktop. Here I will choose API, API, and we click on create here. And here, as you can see, our Docker file is already created. And if you want to check, yeah, the opposite things. So we have all what we need to launch Docker. And here, we can launch Docker here. We click on Docker to be able to see, to, to deploy my uh, web API on Docker. My, it will be in my machine locally in Docker desktop. So here, it's already launched. Ah, okay, but because it's not the, we need to, to, to say that's uh, the setup project to be primary one, so because it was on the web, but here we can launch Docker and we get it. So, we were waiting just to see, okay, I think we can shut this. So, We will try to check uh, the image in Docker. Waiting to here, we go to command line. We say Docker images, and here we have our contactors, the our image. This is the image on Docker, and we can create more than one image for the same web API. This is. It's really important, the one of advantage of uh, Docker, containers, and microservices. Sorry. And uh, we can do the same thing for, web API, for, uh, for the presentation layer, for example, if you want to create, uh, if you want to create, for example, uh, here, I want to create a MPC, new project, and we can do the same thing here. And we can say, for example, here, uh, this is web port, microservice, for example. We can create, and we can choose MVC here, and we check enable, we check enable Docker support, we click on create. And we can have the same thing here. The file, Docker file will be created. We set it as start the project, and we can launch it on Docker. It will be a web application, but uh, we it, it will be if we check again Docker image we will find this project. It's not uh, run it yet. This one. This one. And we try to check here. Other one, but uh, we find it. Okay. So we go back to our application our presentation here. So uh, in previous demo, we are uh, we we started from an old application that uh, include many many layers, many services too in uh, the service layer, and we created a, a new solution, blank solution. And we added, for we are able to add more, and then uh, API and the web application, and uh, this is one to start my, our microservices, and we deploy this in a local. But in, uh, in a, we needed to deploy this in in the cloud, 
And uh, in Azure, we talk about cloud, we talk about Azure containers in Azure. Uh, here we have the app services that we know to deploy many, many applications. The service fabric is uh, it's a an, an container and orchestrator tool. Kubernetes tool, it's an uh, uh, orchestrator and uh, container. And we have a container instance and batch. In our case, we will try to use a registry, container registry in Azure to deploy. It's easy from uh, from Visual Studio to, to, to do it. So we go back to our application just to, to show you how we can do that. So we start from here. We can choose a web or any web API application. Here we choose publish. And as you can see here, we find all, all published target but that we can use it. We have the, the app services the container registry, the container registry is dedicated to deploy our images to push them into Azure. And uh, we can create a new one here from, from Visual Studio. It will be created in our Azure portal, or we can select from existing Azure the container. If we already have the container created in Azure portal, we can add it and we can use the Docker uh, uh, Docker Hub, it's uh, dedicated, it's an open source dedicated to Docker, or we can use a, a custom server that uh, we configure it uh, in, uh, in a hoster. So here we click create, we create our profile, and uh, we give a DNS prefix because here you will create a name and our subscription, we define research group, and we click in, on create for here. So it's deploying step. It takes a few times because it's deploying into Azure to create our container. Container registry, it includes all container that you need. It can be grouped using uh, your research group here. And uh, it's here. When we click to publish, it will be published in our portal, in portal of uh, Azure. And uh, we can, after uh, go through CI CD pipeline uh, or create app uh, services to if it's uh, it's a web application to show it or if we include Swagger for example for API to display our API what we have so we go back to our uh, our presentation here so we talk when we talk about containers Docker we need to talk about orchestrator in Azure or here, for example, here we have two known uh, orchestrators in Azure, but uh, the use is different. So if we use the Kubernetes with, uh, with Docker or Service Fabric, you need to know, to choose. It depends from your microservices. If it's really based on container only, or it's based on plain process, stateful services, and uh, you find the uh, well, Linux and uh, Windows, it's the same, it's not a problem. And uh, as you know here, uh, Kubernetes is open source for uh, automation, deployment, scaling, and operating of uh, application. And uh, we, can, uh, we can pay uh, in Azure for VMs in cluster uh, and you to create, to have the space, pay as you go here. And it's IS container infrastructure. And the same for service fabrics. So uh, this session was uh, an overview about microservices with Docker. Microservices allow to, in, uh, to evolve, deploy, and scale part of application independently, but we can't use uh, this architecture for small application because it's dedicated to distributed uh, software challenge and a challenge and uh, for scalable and long-term evolving application. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, Please, uh, and you can send your questions uh, to my Twitter, and you can find uh, main, more detailed uh, source code in my GitHub about this uh, this example and other example. Hey, Hamida, thank you so much. Uh, we've been looking on the chat, and I, we don't see any questions. 
So uh, well, thank you for sharing your Twitter. So again, if anybody has any questions, um, go ahead and use Twitter to ask Hamida those questions. Um, the GitHub repo is right there so we can share that. Thank you so much, that's great. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge and your experience with us. We really appreciate that. It's, you know, people like you is what makes our community strong and uh, makes us better. All right. So yes, sure. Yes. Awesome. So all right, everybody, we are going to be going into our next speaker. And let me check that here. We have Santosh talking about Cosmos DB for ASP.net. So we'll get that going here. We'll be right back.